X-Men has some of the greatest collaborations in comic book history. There's beauty in collaboration, and new X-Men show that off as well as anything in the history of comics. Marvel is the house of ideas. It's the house that Stan, Steve, and Jack created. But every now and then, there comes a voice. It's hard to say exactly what would drive a creator towards their magnetic north. When Morrison and Quietly were working, I think comic books was primed for a new take on the superhero comic. It was a new millennium. What does that mean for our heroes? In 2001, Grant Morrison was already one of the biggest writers in comics. I think he was towards the end of his JLA run at this time. The thing about Grant is that he brings the most insane ideas to the table, at the same time makes them so cool and fun and funny. I was super excited from the get-go. I was already a huge Grant Morrison fan. He had a, a tremendous impact on me as a comic book reader, as someone who wanted to write comic books. I still worship at the altar of Grant. He had already had so much cred, but he had never really worked at Marvel. As I understand it, when Joe Quesada and Mark Powers was the X-Men editor at the time, went to Grant, they wanted Grant to be Grant. And from what I understand, he turned in his manifesto. Here's where mutants are now, no longer the minority. They're quickly becoming the majority. They are the next step in evolution, and they won. They're gonna be hated and feared, not because they're weird and different, which they'll still be, but they're hated and feared because they're taken over. And that was one of those huge ideas that Grant put forward that was so cool. It was everything a comic should be. It challenged your ideas of what a mutant was, and all of a sudden we were talking about sentient viruses, and just really, really cool out there ideas. It was Grant's idea to call it New X-Men, and the idea that the new is like a mirror image of the men at the bottom, and like, that is so clever and so neat. Nearly everything Grant does is amazing, but when he and Frank work together, they both level each other up. Grant and Frank Quitely together was absolutely what I wanted the X-Men to look like and feel like. Looking up at the shelf and seeing, like, you know, Grant Morrison, X-Men, this amazing cover of them, like, striding out towards the reader with their faces in shadow. They look like aliens. They look kind of strange. These are not sort of superheroes. They're something else. They're something kind of sci-fi. I love the looks of every one of those characters. I liked it. Everything felt very fresh and new, even though these were a group of characters we knew so well. Seeing Wolverine with no shirt and the jacket and the dog tags, that was exactly the Wolverine that I wanted. Frank Quitely is quite possibly the greatest comic book artist alive and maybe of all time. His work is so perfectly composed to show what the action that is happening is, whether that is an action-packed panel or a quiet panel. There's an elegance and a simplicity to it. He does dynamics like no one else. Frank's action doesn't always come right at you. It is often going across the page. Simplicity plus the complexity of the details that he's doing, to me, is what makes Frank Frank. I would pour over these pencils because they were so delicate and so powerful at the same time. As an intern, it was my job to open up the boxes, take them to the copier, I'd make two full-size copies and then two small copies, and they'd send it off to the inker. On the sly, I would end up making three full-size copies of the stuff that I love the most. And I was like, I don't know what this story is at all yet. And then it came out and it hit me like a ton of bricks. These amazing covers and just looking at every line that Quietly had drawn. That might have been the first time I really felt like costumes had been designed. After an era of like spikes and chrome and giant blades out everywhere, you looked at that and you could see exactly what he was going through. It was like a rescue organization. The weirdness of the faces sometimes, the body shapes, he brings these super weird characters into it that fit best with X-Men than anybody else. X-Men is supposed to be weird and strange and that is Frank's art to a T. I think Frank Quitely is one of those guys who was born to draw weird characters and he drew some super weird ones in the X-Men. Some of my favorite mutant characters, favorite X-Men are the ones who can't just put on a, a hat and a coat and go out and walk among humans and blend in. Glob Herman can never do that. Beak can never do that. And I loved those super weird characters, especially the class of the Misfits. While it was totally new, it was still X-Men. It was still Cyclops being Cyclops, just pushed further. The idea of secondary evolutions, you're seeing that in Beast, 
and Cat Beast. Cat Beast is the greatest form of beast. Wolverine, Jean, and Professor X, and then Emma Frost. Emma Frost is a diamond, secondary mutation, living up to her true potential because she is the greatest. I'm a sucker for reformed villains, and this semi-reformed villain was perfection. Month after month after month, always the first thing, always the first thing I read. This came out, X-Men was the most exciting book. It was the most exciting book Marvel was doing. It was like the most exciting book anybody was doing. A lot of the things that made X-Men special when Jack and Stan did it in the 60s it was the metaphor for things like the civil rights movement, subcultures on the road to becoming cultures. And so what Grant was talking about was that a lot of these things that were subcultures aren't subcultures anymore. They are the culture. The work was so good, you couldn't argue with it. I got super into it, and it felt like the world did too. I think it was the most successful the X-Men had been in a long while and it set things in motion for years to come. Grant was able to come in and strip things down to really zero in on what it meant to be a mutant and what it meant to be a part of the X-Men. I think that's a really, for me, it was a super, super definitive take on those characters. It changed the way that mutants were hated and feared and it made them care a little bit less about it and not fret so much about it. You can't touch us anyway, we're too cool. There's something about the hated and feared by the world you just want to protect thing. That kid is very strong, I think, to sort of the teenage mind, the young mind. Sometimes it's been a metaphor, sometimes it's been more of like a thematic connection. Hatred, persecution, persecution of minorities, persecution of anyone who doesn't fit in. I think all kids on some level feel a connection to that. I don't think there's a single person who reads comics who feels like they fit in everywhere. We all feel like we're outcasts. And the X-Men are the ultimate outcast superheroes. And whatever element about yourself makes you feel like you don't fit in or society doesn't like you, you immediately feel a kinship and a bond with the X-Men. That's what the X-Men tap into. And it shows us this better way. Unless, of course, you're listening to Magneto and then it shows you a worse way. Don't, don't do that. So much of what made Marvel amazing in the 60s was Jack Kirby and Steve Ditko's weirdness. Their crazy ideas, and Grant got back way more to that strangeness. It was the first time that it stepped fully out of the Chris Claremont, John Byrne, Dave Cockrum, Paul Smith, Jim Lee shadow. It tore it up and yet put this puzzle back together that still looked like X-Men. It was still X-Men. It was just like you'd never seen it before and maybe better than ever.